अमृत है तेरे बोल तो पैगाम जिंदगी अमृत है तेरे बोल तो पैगाम जिंदगी तेरे सिवा नहीं कोई आवाज वक्त की The map of the world has evolved from one big chunk of land to huge continents. But that was for the tectonic plates moving under natural circumstances. But the division of these continents continued at the hands of mankind. This was mostly not through natural phenomenon, but man's urge of gaining political control and then extending the boundaries of this control. History has witnessed conquests of lands by empires through military coups and even through peaceful means of developing nation states. This ever-changing face of the map has always been attributed to attempts of establishing peace. Even when one tyrant ruler replaced another, the motive was always claimed to be the same: peace. But the pages of history tell us a different story this transformation of the world map this crumbling of nations and the emergence of new states has brought about everything else but peace peace is one thing that the world has failed to achieve now it is when the world again getting divided into blocks extremism is escalating and the financial and economic situation is worsening there is an urgent need to end all kinds of hatred and to lay the foundations of peace this can only be done by respecting all kinds of sentiments of each other if this is not done properly honestly and with virtue it will escalate into uncontrollable circumstances was it for wrong political decisions or down to erroneous geographical demarcations or religious conflicts whatever the reason but the underlying factor has always been one lack of leadership today we observe that the world has become a global village mankind has become very closely knit together the people of all nations religions and cultures are found in all countries and so this requires that the leaders of every nation should consider and respect the feelings and sentiments of all people the leaders and their governments should strive to create laws that foster an environment and spirit of truth and justice rather than making laws that are a means of causing distress and frustration to the people injustices and cruelties should be eliminated and instead we should strive for true justice one may argue that every nation has a leader and so does almost every religion then why is leadership or absence of leadership to be blamed but the fact of the matter is that every nation may have its own leader and every religion their own but as the issues spill out of nations and spread to become global the leadership too would need to be a global one such a leadership could only be sent from god as man made leaders would not be acceptable to all nations and all sections of the society this was done by allah the almighty by sending to this world a leader who was to be the hakam and the adl the arbitrator of all nations in this age according to our beliefs god almighty sent the founder of the ahmadiyya muslim jamaat hazrat mirza ghulam ahmed of qadian as the promised messiah and the imam mahdi in, com- 
in complete submission to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The promised Messiah was sent to propagate the real and true teachings of Islam and the Holy Quran. He was sent to establish a bond between man and God Almighty. He was sent to identify and recognize the rights owed by man to one another. He was sent to end all forms of religious warfare. He was sent to establish the respect, dignity, and honor of every founder and every prophet of any religion. He was sent to, to draw attention towards attaining the highest standards of moral values. And he was sent to establish peace, love, compassion, and brotherhood throughout the world. Like every human being, the promised Messiah, after establishing a community of Muslims that solely focused on establishing the lost peace of the world, passed away from this world in 1908. But what he left behind was not only this community, but his Khilafat, his successorship, to lead not only the community, but to call the world to its creator, the only way that could bring about peace, from individual level to the society at large. God willing, the Ahmadiyya Khilafat will always be known as the standard bearer of peace and harmony in the world, as well as be loyal to the country in which members reside. The Ahmadiyya Khilafat is also here to perpetuate and continue the mission of the Messiah and Mahdi, and so there is absolutely no reason to fear the Khilafat. This Khilafat draws the attention of members of the community towards fulfilling these two obligations for which the Prophet Messiah came, and as a result, try to create peace and harmony in the world. Today, his fifth successor, Hazrat Mirza Masrur Ahmed, may Allah strengthen his hand, is devoted for the service of humanity. I have delivered the same message, calling for peace and justice. On many occasions in different parts of the world, I do the same. I do not know how much impact my views have had on those who have listened to me, and I am not aware to what extent they are working towards developing peace within their own circles of influence. Nevertheless, I will, God willing, always continue to carry out my task and my responsibilities of promoting peace, tolerance, justice, and compassion to the corners of the world. I will continue to tell all people that in order to be relieved of the pain and suffering that we face today, we must adopt true justice and equality. His first and foremost mission as successor of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, is to call the world to the one and only God, Allah. His message is for the whole world, every nation, every religion, and every circle of the society. His Holiness, in light of the Quranic teachings, sees belief in one God and fulfilling the rights of God's creation as the only way forward in the process of establishing of peace. The founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community said that he had been sent by God Almighty in this era, in servitude to the Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad Wasallam, in order to spread the two paramount objectives of Islamic teachings. First, to bring mankind closer to God Almighty, and secondly, to draw the attention 
of humanity towards fulfilling the rights of one another. It is my belief that these two objectives are the bedrock for the establishment of genuine and long-lasting peace in the world. But the details of the turbulent and the volatile international scenario are not hidden from his sight. His Holiness has a great insight into the whole array of issues that lay the foundation of the global, multidimensional crises faced by the world. Political leaders who have had the chance of being in audience with His Holiness are always amazed to learn how deeply His Holiness understands diplomatic relations and foreign affairs. And it is not only about understanding, it is the solution to all such problems that he suggests to the world leaders. Taking this message with him, he travels far and wide to the corners of the earth. Just a few months after last year's peace symposium, I traveled to the United States and was invited to address members of Congress at Capitol Hill. Apart from the politicians, a number of important think tanks and academics were also in attendance. In my address to them, I said that as the world's biggest superpower, the United States had to consider its responsibilities to the wider world. I said that if they fail to fulfill their obligations, and if they fail to observe the proper standards of justice, then the, they would lead the world towards a terrifying destruction. I said that the coming generations would lay the blame at the feet of us, and in particular, the major powers of this time. Our children or grandchildren would not forgive us because they would know that we could have prevented the harrowing legacy that we left behind for them. Similarly, last December, at the European Parliament in uh, Brussels, our good friend who has just spoken as well, Dr. Charles Tanak, MEP, organized an event in which I was able to address members of the European Parliament. Also in attendance were MPs from various national parliaments and a range of other dignitaries and influential people. I took the opportunity to remind the European countries of their responsibilities as member nations of the European Union. Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed, the Caliph of the Promised Messiah, has identified that all major political problems stem from economic lust. Bigger nations trying to sabotage economies of smaller nations. He strongly believes that economic lust is one of the major factors behind almost all major wars of this day and age. The world's economic crisis has contributed hugely to global unrest and increased frustrations amongst the masses. Another major cause of division is internal power struggles within countries. And then, in many nations, the rights due to members of the public are being unjustly usurped. Another factor is that some parties seek to demonstrate their power and might by treating others extremely cruelly. Further, a root cause of division is a lack of justice in the world. This is leading directly to a complete lack of mutual confidence and trust. Another cause of unrest is the fact that people or governments look at the wealth and resources of others with a sense of, sense of envy and greed. In fact, they do not limit themselves to the envious classes but actually seek to seize 
what is not rightly, uh, rightfully theirs. Where armies are trained to fight, His Holiness Mirza Masood Ahmed has a message of peace for them too. The strong Islamic belief that a war does not mean a license to kill is a message that His Holiness conveys when addressing defense strategists. During the Second World War, around 70 million people were killed. And it's said that 40 million of those who died were civilians. Thus, more civilians sacrificed their lives than military personnel. Further, the aftermath of the war was truly terrifying, whereby the post-war related deaths ran into millions. For many years after the nuclear bombs were used, radiation continued to have a terrible degenerative effect on newborn children. To summarize, the message Hazrat Mirza Masrur Ahmed, may Allah be his helper, has, is very simple and straightforward. Belief in the Creator and following his commandments. This powerful yet peaceful message is catching the attention of world leaders. From Tokyo on the far east end to Vancouver on the far west. His message of peace, of reconciliation, of love, um, of commitment to community, of respect for the elderly, care for the uh, young, is an incredibly powerful message at all times, but I think is particularly resonant at a time when there uh, are uh, heightened fears in some communities that communities will be set one, and one against uh, each other. And so I'm uh, hugely uh, privileged to be able to welcome him here to the Palace of, Palace of Westminster and strongly uh, support and join in with him in, in seeking to promote a message of peace. Again, it is an honor to welcome you, Your Holiness. And I want to say uh, it's an honor because you are a man, though of humble beginnings, your leadership has made you a figure of global prominence. Uh, you started as a teacher and you have become a guide for millions of Muslims worldwide. You have been persecuted for your beliefs, jailed for your faith, and exiled from your homeland, but you refuse to turn to bitterness or vengeance. And that is a very important lesson. I have met His Holiness myself, and I respect his strong commitment to promoting peace and understanding. At a time when extremists are seeking to divide us, His Holiness has delivered an inspiring and peaceful message of love overcoming hatred. So again, what a, a pleasure it is to welcome you, Your Holiness, to, uh, to Ottawa, uh, an opportunity to uh, discuss the, the many challenges facing the uh, uh, Ahmadiyya Muslim community, uh, but also the opportunities that we have to work together on shared, uh, shared goals and challenges. Amrat hai tere bol, to paigham zindagi. Amrat hai tere bol, to paigham zindagi.